Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance here with another video for you today. Uh, today will be something I mentioned in my tool loadout video. I'm going to change out the brakes and the rotors on the front of my wife's car. It's a 2015 Honda Fit. This is not something that will normally be on this channel as far as mechanic type work, auto mechanic. I don't do this for anyone. I only work on my own cars. It's just a thing for me. I will maybe put in car stereos or backup cameras or remote starts for people, but typically as far as under the hood or anything, you know, in the chassis or anything like that, I'll work on my own vehicle, but I typically don't work on others. So you won't see a lot of auto work on this channel, but I wanted to shoot this video for two reasons. One is, as you can see, I've got two hands and yet I'm recording. I've had been struggling with that in my other videos. Uh, my kids got me a GoPro for Christmas and today I'm using the head mount. I wanna see how that looks. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. I also got a chest mount, but I thought the head mount might be better because then if I turn my head and look at something, wherever I turn my head so whatever I'm looking at you guys are looking at and I thought that might be better versus if I put it on my chest then it's going to always be staring at whatever my chest is looking at so then that way if I reach in my tool bag and get something you'll see me actually looking in my tool bag and, and so on uh, so I wanted to try that out with this video so again let me know what you think about it in the comments below I've never used a GoPro before first time uh, maybe there's some settings out there I need to change what of you guys knows more about than me uh, you let me know uh, on the tool reviews I'll probably still stay stay with the format of using my phone as the camera and putting that directly in one spot because I'm not going to be moving around but for work orders and things like that I might go with this setup so let's go ahead and get started today uh, on the brakes and rotor change on my wife's car uh, i've already changed this side so we're going to go around to the driver's side and take a look at that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and uh, jack up the car normally i might would loosen the lug nuts but having my m12 stubby i don't have to worry about that they're going to come right off so we'll get this lifted up the lug nuts on this car are 19 millimeter. Uh, so if you're actually watching this because you're wanting to change the brakes and rotors on your Honda Fit, again, this is a 2015, the process would be identical to this, but it's a pretty similar process even if you're using a different vehicle. Uh, this might be different size uh, bolts and, and things like that. All right, so now we're gonna And for those of you who are wondering how strong this little M12 stubby is, this is the 3 8 uh, Man, I've not had one problem. I've, I've taken the lug nuts off my, off my truck. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Get me a parts bin started here. here the next step will be to get this screw right here out now sometimes there's two actually usually there's two uh, this one's only got one and a lot of times these are the things that are a big pain to get out without stripping them and if you strip them you then have to drill them out it's quite a big pain for that uh, but what I like to do before I even attempt to is I just get a punch and then I go out here on the outside edge and just go around and tap it. Because usually what's holding that in is just rust. And that's what makes it tight. You can almost even see rust coming up. And then the next key to getting these out is to use the right bit because most people you're just going to go get a phillips screwdriver but this is a honda car so it actually takes a jis number three uh, this is a vessel screwdriver it's uh got this on amazon but i mostly got it just because it comes with all these different bits that are jis so that if i'm working on a honda car or anything else that would use these i've got them 
so to use the right bit actually to get that in there and seat it good is really nice and sometimes it still won't come that's still too tight so i'm going to tap it some more you strip these and your job just became more fun so you want to take your time and if it doesn't come still doesn't feel like it is uh, you can also use an impact now i'm taking out this screw if you can't get it by hand the beauty of these new milwaukee impacts with these settings on is sometimes you can put it on number one Move up the two. Move up the three. Get it out. Again, I'd try it by hand first before doing that. I had no problem getting the other one out by hand. This one was stuck on a little bit more. Make sure and put your screw in your parts bin. And again, it's the key is having the right bit. JIS number three if you're working on a Honda. shouldn't need that anymore all right the next step is to go ahead and get this caliper off let me see if i can get some better light back in there for you guys so you basically have and i don't know if i can get to where you can see these you got these two slide bolts here and then there's also a bolt here and another bolt that's down here all four of those we got to get out uh, the bigger ones are 17 millimeter on this car and then the smaller ones are uh, 12 millimeter it's easier to use an extension to be able to get to all these so that you're not just in the way of the the line i want to go ahead and break all of them loose before pulling them out or else it's going to be hard for you to break the other ones while it's all wiggling around on you like crazy so i like to go ahead and break all four of them all right now we're going to break these caliper bolts loose there's the top one bottom one's kind of similar place just right down here below sometimes these are tight and hard to get so sometimes you got to give it a, a little bit of hammer persuasion and that's broke loose now too so now we'll take out all four of those bolts and now that i got i like to take the slide ones out first just because it seems like that's better just personal preference and again put it in the parts bin well that didn't work did it now i take out the bottom one that way it's hanging on the top again personal preference and i'm by no means an auto mechanic if there's somebody who actually does this for a living uh, i'm sure i'm doing some things different than what you would do i do this every once in a blue moon but it's it's not a hard job you just got to make sure you put things back correctly is the main thing take out this top one then i usually sometimes will take a flathead in here and kind of go both directions kind of get that brake pad pushed back so it comes off easier and then i have a caliper hanger here so that whenever i take this off i can get out the pads and the caliper and then i can hang this up here so that it's not just dangling i don't want that to fall and something happen to that hose 
and I like to put it back up there the same way that it goes so I don't end up getting this all twisted all right the next thing we got to do is take off this rotor and sometimes that's something that needs some persuasion as well and since I'm changing it I'm not worried about what's gonna happen to it I'm gonna hit it on the back I'm trying to make sure I don't hit this and there it comes so now that's off uh, based on looking at them I don't think the rotors are really all that bad they could be warped and I just wouldn't know it uh, the brake pads are definitely low on wear so my guess would be that see if I can get it if I would have just changed the brake pads that probably would have taken care of our issue but again I'm already in here it didn't cost me but maybe uh, 60 more dollars worth of parts I'm just going to go ahead and change them and then that way I know it's taken care of I don't have to wander and then spend all this time to change the pads and then she might still have a little bit of vibration and then I'm going to get back in here take those back off change the rotors that just doesn't make sense to me so the main thing you want to do here is any you can't have anything on any of this if you've got anything on here it's going to cause you issues so I like to take uh, either some sandpaper or a pad like this and just clean this up a little bit <laughs> also like to get the m12 of this tool as well that's on my list of one days but again i don't do a lot of mechanic work or a lot of metal work or anything like that but it's one of them tools that one day if i find it on sale it's going to make it into my toolbox <laughs> got the air compressor turned off so it didn't kick on and make a lot of noise and I like to just clean this stuff off too I didn't feel anything on here so I think we're good anyways but I just like to give it a good clean I like to rub my finger over it one more time just to make sure I don't feel any kind of ridge or anything. And then, then what we'll do next is put on the new rotor. They ship these with the coating on them. Uh, so I typically like to spray them down again with some brake cleaner. Make sure they're clean. Next thing, put the screw back in. There's a lot of debate on whether or not you have to have these screws. They say they just put them on there to locate the rotor in the factory until they get the wheel put on. But I'm always a fan of if it was on there to start with, I'm going to put it back on there. And again, you want to make sure you get it nice and tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and... clean the outside of this rotor where I had stuff on my hands and now we're going to move on to the brake pads we're going to take the old ones out 
And as I take these out, I like to just set them how they went in there. Just for those of you who are not someone who does this very often. Then I like to take out this hardware because they gave me new. Check this these areas, see if they're clean. And go ahead and put some lube on that. Put in the new hardware, same place as the old. Just snaps in. And you wanna make sure you don't get any grease or anything on these pads when you put them in either and you can see that this one has the wear indicator uh, the same as these do so that goes on the inside got the pads put in they just slide into the hardware like so and again remember this always goes towards the inside so that's going to go into the uh, caliper like this so now what I want to do is prep this for what I need to do to it I'm gonna spin it around I need to push this back in I have a tool like this you just get this in and then you want to slowly let me flip that around slowly press that back in until you get it all the way in that's going to give you room because all those old pads were wore so now these new pads are thicker I need to be able to get all the room I can get to get this back on. I, you don't want to do this quick. Just a little at a time. And the key is that you want to do it evenly. That's why a tool like this that covers the whole thing works really well. You could also take like the old brake pad and stick in there and then press in on that to where that whole pad would be pressing on that at the same time. That would be helpful as well. Gonna pull out these slide pins and clean those off and re-lubricate those and you want to do this one at a time because they're not the same so you want to make sure you put them back in the right spot uh, and I'll show you the difference whenever I pull out the second one the second one has a little plastic piece on the tip and I'm, I'm trying to describe this stuff the best I can guys, but again, I'm not a auto mechanic don't even claim to be so some of the names for some of these things I know what they I know basically How to fix stuff uh, May not know what to call everything and that's the that's the thing that I always tell people about maintenance just in general if you can do one thing whether you're an electrician a plumber a carpenter 
it's all really the same. It's just different materials. Uh, if I can look at something, figure out how it's supposed to work, and then see what's causing it to not work that way, I can fix it. It doesn't matter if it's something that's in plumbing or electrical, HVAC. Uh, now, sometimes, again, like with mechanics, uh, auto mechanics, you have to have some pretty expensive tools to diagnose stuff. Same thing in the HVAC industry. To really dive in and check air conditioner units the way that you need to, sometimes you got to spend some money on some tools. And unless you do it for a living, you just can't you can't spend that kind of money on things. So now I push this pin back in. You want to push it in until this rubber boot seats back on top of there. You'll see that. See that happen there. And now see how how springy that is. Same thing on this one. We'll do the same thing. Hold the boot back pull the pin out now you see that how that's got plastic on the end i have no idea why that is but i just know it's different and i don't want to i wanted to make sure and put them back in the same spot if you're a person who knows why this has the plastic on it or the rubber uh, let us know down in the comments below but again for my purposes i'm taking it out putting it back where it was and making sure that it works uh I might not know the exact reasoning behind a lot of things, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. And then I also know that you shouldn't really put this lubricant on that rubber because it's liable to cause it to deteriorate over time. So I'm gonna push this slide pin back in, same way as the other. You'll see it go over, boom, there it is. So now we've got that done. So now I need to get this put back into the caliper. I like to take this, slide this up in there, and get these started first, just because it's easier to do that with it out here. So grab my two small bolts. It's much easier to do out here than it is to try to get that all in there. And again, just get them started. That one started. Get the other one lined up because now as i'm trying to line up the other holes i'm not fighting uh, with these screws that one started now we'll slide this on get this top bolt lined up No particular order again just doing this one because it's the easiest easiest for me to get to see if I can get you in here at all that one started get the bottom one started that's that one's easy to get started because everything else isn't moving Now we're going to tighten these down. The two side, the two slide bolts, the spec on those is 17 foot pounds on this car. And then the two bigger bolts are 80 foot pounds. Uh, so that's what I'm going to tighten those two. You probably don't even know anybody that would ever even do this. Most people would just tighten them until it gets to the point of where it's tight. But again, I just like to show and do the things how they're supposed to be. There you go. The torque wrench just broke. Now we'll tighten up the bottom one. It'd probably be easier to do the big ones first. And I'll come back and I'll check these after I tighten the big ones down. I'm just getting these because I had that already on the socket. And sometimes it's hard to fit the torque wrench in here. See, so you see that click? That's how you know that you're at that torque. All right, now we'll go. To 
of 80 foot pounds which is the max that this wrench does i've got a half inch one that i'll do here in a minute for the lug nuts but you can see you got these numbers and you just spin this up until you get to the desired number that you want so, so i'm going to get this up to 80. again i don't know how well you guys can see anything because that's the downside to me of this gopro it's nice to have two hands but i have no idea what it's recording right now so for all i know it's even off and been off this whole time and i wouldn't even know it so now we're going to tighten up these to 80 foot pounds let's get it snugged This would be a lot easier if you had a lift or something as a mechanic as well but like i said i just don't do a lot of auto work so it doesn't do me a lot of good to buy or to spend a lot of money on that kind of stuff down to 17 get to 17 all right tighten that back down make sure we're still good on these there you go so I did need a little bit more Okay, now again, I'm gonna take my clean rag and the brake fluid cleaner. And just go over that one more time because I did get some stuff off my fingers on there. Now all that's left to do is put the wheel back on. Again, tighten that down. It's 80 foot pounds as well got this half inch wrench uh torque wrench i've already got it set to 80 so once we get the wheel on with this i'll torque it down with that and then we should be good uh, but again I, I i'm not a mechanic don't claim to be uh, and, and i like i said i always want to encourage everyone you're capable of doing a lot of things that Maybe you don't think you could do. If you're able to do some things, you can do a lot of things. Because it's all the same. It's something's not working. What is keeping it from working? And how? what can I do to fix fix it? And it's just a matter of being able to look at things and say, this is why this isn't working. I fixed, you know, uh, computer boards and things like that. I know nothing about it, but I know it stopped working. I opened it up. You can look on the board and see a little spot where the solder had came loose. Well, obvious to me, that's not supposed to be that way. So I'm going to re-solder that point and see if it works. And sure enough, you know, once I did that and plugged it back up, started working again it's just the ability to be able to look at things and say this is how it's supposed to work i'm going to try it the whole reason why i'm doing this is one i don't have to take it anywhere it's taking me what maybe 25 minutes to do this side over here and that's with me if i was not videoing and talking it wouldn't have taken near this long 
and then me also trying to make sure I'm remembering everything. Uh, but number two is, it's cheaper. If I would have taken this somewhere, it would have cost me more than what it cost me to buy the parts to do it. And then I even got myself a few tools because I didn't have the little hangers to hang the calipers up with. I also didn't have the brake compression tool. Uh, uh, so now I got to get me a few tools to keep for the next time I need them. Got the parts. I got the job done. I didn't have to drive my car anywhere for cheaper than what it would have cost me in the first place. So that's the big reason why I'm doing this. And that's why I work on my own cars. It's more of a, a convenience thing. And then it's also a chance for me to buy some tools. If I can, not even on a mechanic type job, if I can do something at my house that normally someone would hire a plumber for, but I can do it for the same price and go buy me a PEX crimper or uh, something else that's a Milwaukee tool or any other tool, a hand tool, some knippics. I'm going to do that because then now I get to go buy me some tools. And that's always an advantage for me or an incentive to me to do my own work because I can buy the parts, provide the labor, get me some tools. And typically it's cheaper than if I would have took it somewhere in the first place. So now we're going to put these back on. Uh, I'm just going get, to get them started. I already hand started them. You never want to just roll them on with this in case you got the threads wrong. I'm going to get them all on fairly decent. Bump it up to three. Just, I like to just get them until they're all tight. And then we're going to take this off. Put it on the torque wrench. Another key thing you might want to always do is check your little parts bin when you're done and make sure you don't have parts in there. Every now and then I've done something and I look and I'm like, well, I've got a bolt or a screw left. I forgot something. So now I would know. So now I'm going to lower this down. Torque these off to 80. Help if I get on the right side. Torque these off to 80. Nothing broke. And what I usually do is I just get it to where it breaks and then I put a little bit more ump on it. Because I'm using uh, adapters because these are bits that are specifically for lug nuts that I have in my truck. But it's a two-sided deal, so I can't put this directly into a half-inch thing. And I don't think I had a 19 millimeter here with me. So there you go, guys. It's uh, changing the brakes and rotors on a 2015 Honda Fit. It's not a hard job. You just got to make sure as you're taking stuff off, remember how you took them off and put them back the same way. That's all there is to it. All right, guys, going to close out this video. Hope you enjoyed watching me change out the brake pads and the rotors on my wife's 2015 Honda Fit. Again, not something you'll probably see very much of on this channel, auto mechanic work. Uh, but a few things, I just wanted to thank all of you who have subscribed to the channel. We're up over 200 and that just blows my mind that we're at that point this fast uh thank you for subscribing if you have and if you haven't make sure you do so if you like seeing videos of me working on things doing tool reviews check out my other videos if you haven't seen those uh, i'm new to all this i'm not used to filming anything or really even speaking out loud all that much uh, sorry for the sniffles throughout the video i've been battling a little bit of a cold for the last two or three weeks I've also been off work, uh, just decided to take the last couple weeks of the year off. So hopefully here coming soon, we're going to have more how-to videos, uh, also some more tool reviews. If you know of anything, again, let me know in the comments below if there's a certain tool that you're interested in. Uh, maybe I've got it, and if I don't have it, maybe it's something I want, and it gives me a reason to buy it. Always looking for that. Uh, let me know also how you like the GoPro footage. I'm back on my phone right now, uh, so this is what my view looks like if i'm holding up my phone but again that gives me one hand let me know if you like that perspective i'm sure there were some things that 
probably were bad viewpoints or whatever it might be, bad perspectives. But again, I can't see anything. That's the one thing I don't like about it. I have no idea what I'm recording. But let me know what you think about the head mount and the GoPro perspective. And then also in an upcoming video, I'll change over to the chest mount. We'll take a look at that. And you guys are the ones watching it. So you let me know what you prefer. And we'll see how we go from there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it. Leave me some comments below. Especially leave me some comments if you do this for a living. And you see that I did something wrong. Let me know before my wife takes off in this car and comes to an untimely death. But you guys have a blessed day. And I hope to see you guys on the next video.